It's time for the match preview, and we are going to be discussing Luton Town versus Cardiff Wednesday night under the lights. And with me to talk about this game, as always, it's my co-host Mark Ryman. How are we getting on, Mark? Looking forward to this one. Yeah, well, look, we've had our first draw under the lights, didn't we, on Friday? So it only makes perfect sense that we get a win on on the next one. Um, let's hope we can start backing up some of these home performances with three points because we need them. We do indeed. And you know what else we need? We need you right at home, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening on Apple or Spotify. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to our channel. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, follow the show so we can be in your ears, nattering away while you're on your commute. Wouldn't that be lovely? Yes, it would. <laughs> ah, but we should recap our last game, shouldn't we? So yeah. what, what game was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was... I've already forgotten. Yeah, well, it wasn't the most memorable, was it? Chong goal was good. There you go. It, it was. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, that was that was a quick recap. I won't even need to put the overlay on that because it, it's done. It's done. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was a pretty forgetful game, I think, for both West Brom mm. and Luton. And I, I guess as an outsider, you know. I can't believe that West Brom have been playing like that um, all season. Um, you know, they, they, they're clearly a better side than they showed, although, they, you know, they do keep drawing games. Um, and they are hard to beat as well. Um, Carlos Corbran knows how to set up a defence. We, we didn't make the most of our um, possession and we didn't make the most of our positional play as well. I think that's fair to say. Um, and they looked like they were playing for a draw from, from minute one, really. Um I'm glad we got back into it. I think that earlier this season, I could see us losing that game quite comfortably. Um, we have Chong to thank for that. It was a piece of individual excellence, capitalising on their mistake, it should be said. But that classy finish, that's the kind of thing that we've been both calling out for to see far more this season. So let's hope that's the the beginning of of, of players taking shots from those sort of positions because we know that we've got the players to to put them away don't we yeah uh, it's something i've been calling for as well on twitter you know constantly saying whenever i see borja signs like whacking one in from outside the box i'm like oh that that'd be nice to see a player take a shot from outside the box uh for me the biggest positive other than the goal uh, and and the point the point very needed you know against a team in the playoffs who regardless of whether they're in good form or not for me, it was seeing Mengi and Bell return and getting 90 minutes because it means they can do it. Like, I'm not expecting them to get chucked into this game against Cardiff now. Um, but I think that's a good segue into some team news. So, yeah, as, as I said, Mengi and Bell both back, but also we see the return of Alfie Doughty and Tom Holmes. So although we have Mads Anderson, Reese Burke and Ruel Walters, all defensive injuries, and of, of course Tom Lockyer as well, out, there's actually options opening up on the defensive side, aren't there? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You go from one extreme to one week um, to the next. Um, it is great to have the options. Um, and as you say, getting Doughty back will be huge. His old club as well. He was on loan there, obviously, wasn't he? Um, and I think we did miss his delivery, particularly from open play. Um, I think, as as we said in the post-match, when Baptiste came on, um, he showed a, a class with the delivery, but we did miss Doughty. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him back in the side. I think he slots straight back in. There's no question in my mind about that. Then it's about, as you say, well, the homes get straight back in and we rest one of Mengi or Bell, um, or we do that against Borough on the Saturday. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, Holmes was absolutely excellent in the games that he played. Um, the, the half that he played against Watford, the full game against Sunderland, and then the, the however many minutes, almost 90 minutes against Coventry, I thought, I thought he was very good. 
Um, so I'd be more than happy to see him slot back in if we think that Mengi or, or Bell and Bell, for example, can't do the do the three game week. For me, if I if I were manager, what I would do would be give Mengi and Bell forty five minutes each, and um, you know start one on the bench, start Tom Holmes next to McGuinness, and then either Mengi or Bell, and then you take them off at half time, and that means you get forty five minutes into their legs. And and that means they're both sort of fresh for Middlesbrough because I would say that Middlesbrough is the game where we probably need both of them. Although Tom Holmes is, you know, as you say, he, he's doing everything he can to play into yeah. the starting lineup on a regular basis. I don't know if it was just him playing up, but the, the, the real issue is what do we do with midfield? Because we have so many options and we have gone back to like a three-man midfield now. Change it, please. Just rotate. Yeah. We've got the players. You know, the, the, I think the most frustrating thing about the last three game week was the lack of rotation in midfield. You know, defence wasn't an option um, in those games so much because, you know, obviously we have some players out, um, everything else. But but midfielders, we, we've got midfielders. We've got plenty, you know, and now Shander Baptiste is back and he just showed his class again. Um, what a player he, he could be for us if he stays fit. I know that's a big if, but please just just mix it up. You know, this isn't a a kind of you know prolonged moan about Kraus or anything else. But it, it was more an issue when we were talking about it before that that Clark continues to be flogged in games where you just think you've got the players. Mix it up a bit. I don't mind actually who it is that plays in that three. I think any of them could do a job there. Um, We've talked about seeing Kraus and Nakamba together. I really like that. I don't think it's as defensive as people think it might be as well. I think Kraus can easily play in front of Nakamba um, because he presses the ball so well. He really backs up Eli well there as well. But whatever it is, yeah, like I said, just just mix it up. Personally, it would be nice to see Shandon Baptiste on the pitch to give us um, at least two really quality um, balls in from, from, from both him and Doughty. The good thing as well is if you were to change Liam Walsh for Jordan Clark, you wouldn't lose any of that height. Well, you lose like maybe an inch, <laughs> but you don't, you don't lose too much. There's not much height to be lost there, is there? Let's be fair. Although Jordan Clark won a few headers. I was surprised in the sort of 80th minute. He was, he, he got he up there. a spring in his step. Yeah, he saw <laughs> Boeing's to. like Tigger, doesn't he? He always has a spring in his step when he's running or walking. He always has a mm. hop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. There's there's no height loss there. Definitely not. But yeah, I agree. It's a three game week. It has to change. It, it has to. Like, um, you know, maybe because Kraus came off, Kraus Baptiste, Nakamba, or or, or Kraus Baptiste, and I, I don't think Clark should start because he's started pretty much every single game that he's been available for, and. Uh, it, it's going to be a combative game. It really will. Mm. Um, they will talk a bit more about them and the opposition overview a bit later. But they play a two-man midfield. So this is a game where it's going to be won and lost in midfield. I know we keep saying it, but it's about turning the ball over in midfield and going at them. Yeah, exactly what was being done to us at the start of the season when we were playing a two-man midfield. We've got to exploit that space. Um, and, and we've got the players that can do it. You know, it's not just just one or two. We've got lots of players that can do that. I, I would be hard pushed to, to to not include Chong if he's fit to play as well in, in one of those two games. I'd like to see him at home probably more than against starting against Borough, but he's an outlet in either of those games. And after that goal, you'd probably think he would have a good shout of starting again. And he's, he's one of Rob's favourites. He generally starts games too. But yeah, you're absolutely right. We've got to exploit the space. I think Sky Sports did a teacher's pet grading. Mm, and I think yeah. Tahith Chong was number one in terms of being the teacher's pet. So yeah, I good thing Jordan Clark was not there because he would have been ahead of Chong. He strikes me as a, as a massive teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he clearly is. Yeah, he clearly is. Right, but shall we have a little look at some previous encounters? Right, so as always, if you want to see every single game with the match programs, the lineups, 
Going back to when Luton and Cardiff were both formed and started playing against each other, you need to check out Hatter's Heritage. They have all of them, and it's absolutely sensational. Check out the website. I'll put it in the description below this video. But with FOTMOB, we are blessed with just the last nine. And, Ryman, do you want to have a guess how this uh, this is spread between <laughs> Luton and Cardiff? Well, I, I know Cardiff will take the majority of particularly the early championship. We were just saying this. My, my main memories are us losing all the time to Cardiff when we first got into the championship. But I think since 2022, 2021, we've, we've been better winning by the odd goal. Um, I just have two words for you, though. Jake Jervis. That's the one thing that sticks in my mind. That what a goal. goal that was. It was the pass. It was the pass yeah. from, from Luke Berry that just cut out six players. It was it was beautiful. It was so Alan good. Alan Sheehan score, scored an absolute banger in that game as well, I seem to recall, didn't it? It was a League Cup. But uh, yeah, uh, apart from that 3-0 at those days particularly, I think Cardiff have got to have the edge over Luton by the last two or three. They do indeed. So it's four Luton wins, five Cardiff wins, and it is very much a change of the guard from 2022 onwards, where we've won our last three encounters with Cardiff. But obviously Cardiff now come into this like the form team in the division, as we've said over and over again, it's... Uh, very concerning, but yeah, I, I, the the EFL game, the the Carabao Cup, really does stick in my mind as well. Like the Alan Sheen free kick was fantastic. Obviously, I wasn't there that night, but the worst not thing many, about really. that was no, not many. I think uh, <laughs> three hundred made the journey, which yeah. is tremendous because it was a midweek, mid-week game. Yeah, yeah, it was. and I think we'd we were playing them again. Um, yeah, we played them. 10 games before that as well. Yeah. So absolutely mad. The, the scheduling is ridiculous. Um, so fair play to all those people. But because of the EFL Cup TV rights at that time, you couldn't get that Alan Sheehan goal from any other angle, which sucks because mm. it was such a tremendous free kick. It was amazing. It was. It was. Yeah. 3-0. What a scoreline as well. And that was in the days when we were struggling against them. Yeah, well, the the next season, they, they turned us over 4-0 as yeah. well. Another yeah. one that sticks in my mind is Isaac Fassell playing for them. Yes. And um, I think that was his only goal for them and That's probably right. one of his only appearances for them. Like His his career was severely derailed with, with injuries. Poor guy. Did he get injured in that game after scoring? Don't make that up. No, no, he didn't. No. He, okay. I don't think he played again for them. I think he might have gotten no. injured in training. Right. He was really unlucky because they was. signed him on a free, I think, um, after he was released by Birmingham. Birmingham signed him from us for some serious money. Yeah. He would have been a proper player had he not been riddled with injury. Yeah. Real shame. He was a great player and he came, he, he only was with us for a short amount of time, wasn't he? And, and clearly we didn't want to sell him. So um, it was Birmingham under Redknapp, I think, wasn't it, that, that bought mm-hmm. him? Um, but yeah, he, he's one of those that 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 could have done, you know, could have had a really, really good career, very strong, pacey forward. Reminded me a lot of Andre Gray when we had him in non-league as well. Um, but yeah, as you were saying, we, we, we tended to have a poor record against Cardiff up until very recently. Um, sort of turned it around in the playoffs, first playoff season, I think. Um, and please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel I feel like there was the odd one nil away there. Um, Alan Campbell springs to mind. Is that the game that maybe the game that Alfie Doughty got injured in for them as well? But uh, that that springs to mind because I remember watching on TV. Um, we were away in in North Wales at the time, um, so. It wasn't quite as close as I'd hoped it was to go to the match. So we watched it on TV, but it was the one nil. I think that was the the, the game that sticks in my mind over, uh, uh, in the league, at least. Yeah, uh, another one that sticks in my mind is where James Shea picked up that ho- that absolute oh, yeah, horror injury. That was bad. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of lots of memories playing Cardiff. Um, 
But let's have a look at their current team. So it's time for the opposition overview. They've got Chris Willock. So in your <laughs> in your championship predictions, you, you thought this is actually looking pretty good now because you predicted Cardiff finishing eighth or something and you thought it was going to yeah. be a load of Chris Willock magic. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see some Chris Willock magic or is it all about Ruben Colwell? Because he is well, ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it has been, hasn't it, recently about Colwell? Um, but having that service, I think, I think, I, I mean, as a, as a, a neutral, I wanted to see Chris Willock, um, perform because we know how good he can be. He's one of those players that you just feel like, you know, don't, his form went off a cliff for QPR. You could put that down to the whole of QPR sort of going off a cliff. The moment Ainsworth walked in the building as well. Um, doesn't help. I imagine anyone's Hucker, motivation. Hucker. Well, yeah. quite. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I kind of put it down to that, but he's such a good player when he's on his on his game. Um, Ruben Colwell's just been um, a one man machine for them going forward, making goals and scoring goals. But I think with that kind of um, assistance up front, I think that makes for a, a really good combination. I don't think Willock has you know found his form as such yet. He's got the odd couple of goals recently. Um, I think, though, with with a side that is now playing more to his strengths and is now providing him with, with some chances, then, yeah, there is every chance that, that that form starts to pick up as well. And, and yeah, they have been just what an incredible turnaround from a, from a team that I and you talked about being almost rock bottom in our... Um, in our revised championship predictions. They've just, out of nowhere, um, turned it around. And obviously... Fair play uh, to Omar Rizal for, for for doing that because it's yeah it seemed like a an, an absolutely uh, nailed on certainty they'll be there or thereabouts in the relegation zone. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting one because I, I don't know where Callum Robinson will fit into this forward line uh, if they do decide to go with with Chris Willock. I guess we'll have to see about that. An interesting one for me though. We were discussing this before we started rolling the cameras. Callum Chambers was a tremendous bit of business for them. It really was. And th then they got O'Dowda on a free as well from Bristol City, I think. They got Rinom Hotter as well, who slotted it in at right back. But the funniest one for me is Ethan Horvath. He went there last season thinking, here's my chance. And he's been dropped because he's been absolute garbage for them. Yeah, I mean, he's... <laughs> There's a there's a reason that despite his record at Luton um, and Forest was, before that, yeah, but but, <laughs> but he, I mean Forest really he never played a game. I know he played that game, um, but you know generally speaking he was you know the moment they got into the Premier League he was like fourth or fifth choice. He was never ever going to break into that. The fact that Luton weren't interesting when when we got promoted says a lot as well. You know he was behind one of the surest defenses in the league and the, and most times when he was tested he he struggled and and that's clearly happened at, at Cardiff as well um yeah so it, it's sad really i i guess because he is part of that season that got us up and and for that reason i i will have always have kind of a, a soft spot for him but you're right he as a as a goalkeeper um I think he flattered to deceive a lot in, in two very strong teams. So, yeah, it's been shown. And now they've got Alwick in goal as well. I think he had a bit of a shaky start, didn't he, um, against Derby? But I think he's picked up a little bit since then. He has indeed. Just two goals conceded in the last five, which is mad. Yeah. Absolutely mad to think about. Um Right, shall we go on to our score predictions for this game? Let, let's finish off with some amazing positivity, shall we? I'll finish then. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone Luton 1, Cardiff 2. I just think Cardiff are at that point now where everything they hit goes in the back of the net. It, it's yeah. it's like a game of heat seeker on Rocket League. You know, they can hit it from the back of 
the David Priest and it would just bend in to like the Kenny end goal. It's it's mad right now. Yeah. They're like the Harlem Globetrotters when it comes to trick shots. It's it's crazy. <laughs> and I, I I don't think we'll have the magic to really unlock them. That that's all. I, I to be honest, I've been bigging Luton up all season. I've been predicting wins for Luton mm. when, you know, we've had no right to win. No one has any right to like win every single game. So yeah, that's why I've gone for a loss. Yeah. Well, I said I'd go last because I am more positive than you on this one. But I, I completely see where you're coming from. O'Dowd's goal, by the way, remind me a lot of uh, Cal Naismith's against Bournemouth in the last minute. Such a similar kind of goal, ball bouncing around, come out, such good composure to score it. Yeah, I mean, what a turnaround for them. And it, yeah, that's scary. Um, I'm hoping that we can... We can start, as I said at the start of this, start building a bit on our, our home form, which generally has been good. I mean, since the Watford game, really it has been good. We, we were the better side against West Brom. We've talked about the problems there in terms of no real cutting edge and the game being scrappy, etc. We were by far the better side against Watford. I'd argue we were the better side against Sunderland as well. Um, you know, so home form's been OK. Um, and... You know, we'll still hopefully have some energy as well. I've gone for a Luton three-one win, Ooh. based on on that. So yeah, I told you I'm being Ooh. more positive. Looks like but delusions I'm... on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I th- I think I think it's I said make or break for for Watford, um, and I keep saying this, and I don't know how long we can keep kicking the can down the road for like, oh, this game's the important one to make a judgment call on, you know, what's going to happen at Luton, but it, you know. The West Brom game only looks okay if we back it up with a win on Wednesday night, right? Otherwise, it looks like a scrappy game of missed opportunities where we then we, we then you know have a poor result, and then we have to follow that poor result up with a very difficult trip to Riverside on Saturday. So you're right; it's probably borderline delusional, um, particularly particularly how how poor we were in front of goal in the last game. I would say though, despite that, we have got Alfie Doughty coming back, so you know best chances created in the league, um, and both our two centre forwards are finding their feet again. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't back against either of them or both of them scoring in this game. So there is some justification for it. I just, I don't want to say turned a corner because, you know, we've been turning, we're in bloody, we're in a circle now at this point. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a labyrinth, yeah. you know, just <laughs> it full is. of, it's a maze full of corners. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think, like I said, that West Brom result will look, Will will look very different depending on the result on Wednesday, um, and I think the pressure's on to to get a decent home format under the lights, um, which which we did against Sunderland but didn't get the result. So that's my justification. Let's see how it pans out. One <laughs> well, way to finish with some optimism. Um, well, if you're watching this on our YouTube, please like the video and subscribe for even more Luton Town content. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple, follow the show. It'd be great to have you along for the ride as we go through this season. But now it's time to kick over to Phil, who's going to be meeting with the opposition to get their thoughts ahead of the game. Over to you, Phil. Thank you, Ollie and Mark, for your insight into the preview for this week's game. My name's Philip Macbeth Seath, and as usual, I'll be speaking to an opposition podcaster this week in the build up to our game. This week, I'll be speaking to Thomas Taylor, the Cardiff City fan. He'll be coming to Kenilworth Road on Wednesday night to see Cardiff take on Luton Town, and they'll look to continue their fantastic run. They are on an absolutely blistering run of form under their new boss, Omar Reza. Luton Town, they go into the game having collected a point off of West Brom. My own personal thoughts on the West Brom game were that the first half was a bit of a snooze fest, but the second half, there was only one team really that wanted to go and win it, and that was Luton Town. There were real positives to be had in that second half. I think that the revelation, really, of Chahith Chong playing at left wing back, uh, which was sort of an opportunity, really, considering that Alfie Doughty usually takes that spot. Um, I thought that Chong was absolutely fantastic, and he got a deserved man of the match. I thought that Hashioka had a good game at right wing back. If he could just work on that uh, final ball, that's all I ask of Hashioka is to work on that final ball and he'll end up working himself squarely into the team. 
I thought that we looked so much better having a few more options. Uh, the fact that we had Mengi back and the fact that we had um, Amari Bell back was absolutely pivotal. Um, and the fact that we can also rely on Baptiste coming back in. Hopefully, he's uh, work. He'll be able to work up some minutes and get back into that starting lineup and sort of take a little bit of the onus off of some of those players that have been playing the full ninety minutes for quite some games now. The game against Cardiff is no doubt going to be a difficult one. Like I say, they're on the crest of a wave, but we're going to have to try and ride that wave and try and overcome them because ultimately games under the lights at Kenilworth Road, we need to be taking three points, especially when you consider our league position. The reality of it is that the last three games, we've overcome our rivals, Watford, and we played superbly for 90 minutes. We played very, very well against Sunderland, but were overcome by a couple of classy finishes. And we've looked like we were the only ones that were going to win the game if anyone was going to against West Brom. So there is positives to be taking. Um, I like the fact that since we've come back from the international break, we're playing to our strengths. So fingers crossed for three points for the Hatters. But here's what Thomas Taylor had to say to me when he joined me for our talk about Luton Town versus Cardiff City on Wednesday night. Right, so everyone, as promised, I've got Tom here for you. Um, so, Tom, first things first, I want to give you the opportunity to do a bit of advertising for free. Uh, so, um, you, you're, <laughs> you're a Cardiff City fan. Um, obviously, you tweet a lot about um, about Cardiff City, and it'd be great for some of our followers um, to, to give you a follow. So, could you just share your socials, uh, your platform, where they can follow you, please? Perfect. Yeah. So, um, hi everybody. Uh, my name's Tom. I'm a Cardiff City fan, uh, as just been said. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Thomas Taylor Four. Um, that's Thomas without a H. Um, and yeah, if you want to kind of see what I'm thinking about Cardiff, um, it's it's gone in kind of contrast this season. Uh, started out kind of uh, poorly, but um, they've, they've my tweets have taken a bit more of a positive uptake uh, in the last three weeks or so. Um, so yeah, if you uh, wanted to drop me a follow, then um, you can find my stuff there. Top man, thank you, Tom. So it brings me to you. You mentioned it briefly yourself there about the fact that there's been a huge upturn in the in the sort of fortunes of of Cardiff City over the last few weeks, particularly the last three weeks. And you're you're pretty much the form team in the league at the moment. So without trying to give you too much of a of a huge question, and I'm I'm just going to sort of let you off the leash really and go, what what has changed? Is it like a miracle from Omariza? Like what's 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 the difference of made that's turned the tide? I think it shows just how important it is to have a squad of players who are happy to play for their coach and love playing under their manager. Um with Bullock, you know, it I think there'll be quite a bit of revisionism uh with him just with how badly things ended. Um he steadied the ship last season. Um, I was one of the people who thought he should have been given a new contract in the summer like he was and kind of keeping in mind, you know, we've got a really tough start. So once we can get through that, then we should be OK. Uh, we got through the tough start and then things weren't OK. And it wasn't so much just losing. It was more kind of losing how we did. And just, you know, it, it was the football was boring. Um the Leeds game at home, we lost 2-0. I don't think we had a shot until like the 85th or 86th minute or something. Like it was just, it was woeful. Um, and, you know, we, we were just kind of devoid of any style. Um, and Rees has come in. Uh, I'll admit uh, it raised a few eyebrows. Um, at the start, I was kind of thinking, ah, okay, it should be all right for just a bit uh, temporary. But um, kind of hoping that maybe we'd bring somebody else in. And the first few the first two games sort of back that up a bit but um since then you know we've come on such leaps and bounds um the football's a lot better you know it's not it's not particularly sexy it's not the most attractive football in the world but you know it's we're holding on to the ball a bit more we're passing it quick we've we got players make actually making runs now um and you know we've seen a bit more of players playing in the sort of expected roles and playing to their strengths as well. Um, so that was a bit of a problem, in my opinion, under Bullet. Uh, he wanted players just to sort of fit in the way that he wanted us to play, but not actually having them. So it doesn't work like that. So players like David Turnbull, he was used a lot more in kind of like a central, like more forward midfield role. 
Um, whereas that's just not the type of player that he is. Um, whereas now that he's kind of you know come back a bit, he's his performances have been so much better, and he, you know he's kind of one of the most important parts of our team. Um, we've seen a few partnerships starting to form really well now. Um, Gutas and Callum Chambers at the back, they've really kind of got each other's number and they're starting to, you know, they've solidified something really good there. And uh, going forward, massively, uh, Ollie Tanner and Ruben Colwell have, you know, they, there was hints of it um, in the Bristol City game uh, where we drew one all. And the kind of mood of, if those two can kind of start something together, then we could be, you know, we could be, we could seriously push it on. And thankfully they have, um, they play off each other so well. And even just all the front line now, there's a bit more of a report there. Um, mm. So it, you know, I just see it's more just kind of, you know, good vibes uh, in the squad playing for a manager that they're happy to. And, you know, just the confidence that we're feeling in the fan base, it's going to be like 10 times that in the team. So um, yeah, yeah, complete change from about a month ago. Oh, I, I mean, it's 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 so positive. I mean, it's one of those ones where you're right. I, I think at the start of the season, like, I hate to use this against a, an opponent that I'm that I'm speaking to and meeting and meeting sort of quite <laughs> fresh. But you were the sort of whipping boys of the of the league for the first few weeks. It just things just would not go in your way. So, I think um, you mentioned as well about Callum Chambers there. I think in the summer, um, it was one of those ones where you thought, right, I think he's finally. If he can finally find a home and start playing regular football, uh, so the fact that you're saying that he's making a good partnership there, because the reality of it is, is that you're not on Arsenal's books for as long as he is, um, without no. being a quality player. Um, and it, it's one of those ones where I'm, I'm quite pleased that he's actually found somewhere to sort of show off his talent. And you mentioned about um, Ruben Colwell and off air, we were sort—I was talking to you about about Ruben Colwell. And for me, I, I mentioned him on our on our championship chat that we recorded only yesterday, and I was saying that he doesn't just stand out because he's got like bleached what bleach blonde hair. Like the guy is a proper, <laughs> properly good footballer. And um, it's just one of those ones I, I was saying about, I'm really looking forward to seeing him because when I see him on the match highlights, he just looks so clever. Like he's just able to have that little bit of foresight to sort of play that clever little through ball in the 18 yard box that could cause a, cause a defence real problems. And um, like I said, I, th- I think he's going to be a fantastic player. And has he been your star player, would you say, this season? Or was, is, is that someone else that's sort of flying under the radar more outwardly? I'd say it's between him and Callum Robinson. Um, with Colwell, I'm so pleased there's finally come now because um, it seemed like when Aaron Ramsey went out with the injury because Colwell's been threatening to do this, like the form that he's in now for the last three years or so. Yeah. And there's been glimpses of it, but then there's been other times as well like it wasn't too consistent. So he'd have one great game maybe from the bench and then he'd start the next and then he'd kind of fade away a little bit. And, you know, it was, he, he was a great player, but it was just a bit too hit and miss with him. Whereas now he's, you know, he, he's making that position his own. Um, It was kind of the feeling when Ramsey went out injured, it's like, you know, this is, he's still very young, but it's almost kind of make or break for him. Um, And now, you know, I say it quietly, I I struggle to see how Ramsey gets back into the team when he's back from injury, um, just with how good. Colwell has been, um, but I absolutely do. And it's the type of player we've been screaming out for at Cardiff for a long time, not just this season, probably like the last two, three years, who, like you said, can just have that eye for ball. You know, he can score great goals. He scored an absolute screamer against Southampton uh, in the League Cup. Um, uh, If you've not seen that one, anyone listening or watching, I'd highly recommend uh, searching it up. It was, oh my God, hell of a strike. yeah, he he just has that little sort of instinct. He can almost see things just before they're happening or just as they're about to happen. And yeah, like he was a bit quiet on Saturday. Um, but you know, that's okay. Um, you know, hopefully from our end he could be saving it for midweek. Um but yeah, no, serious, serious talent. Yeah. It's interesting as well, because I th- I think that there's sort of what you mentioned as well in your, in your sort of opening bit about the, the the fact that you've obviously changed manager, that's that's one thing, but changing the style of play, because I think that um, without trying to make it too Luton-centric, this conversation, it's it's been something that since the last international break we've seen at Kenilworth Road in particular, there's, been, there's had to be 
a change in the way that we've played. Um, we were we were perhaps trying to be a bit too clever and a bit too sort of Premier League for the Championship. I know it sounds silly, but we were trying to play too much game on the floor and not utilising our strikers. And the last last few games, we've been getting the ball forward a lot more quickly. Um, so it'll be it'll be a real test for the likes of Chambers tomorrow. But um, We've not really changed the the formation, but we've changed, like I say, just the style. So it's it's going to be interesting to see um, how Cardiff set up. I mean, it's one of those weird ones, you know, when you you have to take like your your apps and your foot mobs and your and your different reviews a little bit sort of like a little bit carefully. But like a lot of play people have got you down as playing a four two two two. I mean. Is that what you're you're seeing on the pitch, or is it is is that too simple, or is it? I mean, it's it's one of those things in it nowadays. Formations are so fluid. Um, yeah. Is it flat back four, and then is it the other six do as they please, or how's it how's it looking uh, realistically, <laughs> Tom? <laughs> it's a, the impossible question. Uh, it's definitely question. a it's a flat back four. Um, yeah. For definite. Um, I'd say it's a bit more of a four three three. Um, okay. And kind of letting the midfield just roam a little bit and let everybody play to their strengths you know just having the trust in our players to um just do what they know they need to do um striker has been a a weird weird position uh for us so far this season um but it has been the last couple of years as well and now you know i'm glad that callum robinson's kind of making that position his his own at a time as well where we've still got plays in that position to come back as well so if he needs a break especially coming up to the winter period where it gets so busy yeah and where we've kind of fallen apart in recent years once we get people like Ateta and Isaac Davis back to kind of you know balance the load a little bit um that's gonna help um but yeah it's I from what I've seen I'd say it's more of a 4-3-3 um with a bit of uh freedom in midfield for yeah. everyone to play to their best Because you've friends. got you've got some like properly talented players. I mean, I, I look at your lineup um, from from the weekend. I mean, you've got El Ghazi, who's who's fantastically skillful player, and also you've got Chris Willock as well, like who was obviously bought in from QPR. I think it was, wasn't it? Was it Chris Willock that bought in? Yeah, um, yeah, um, it was. Yeah, he's a properly properly talented footballer, and I think that you can see from where QPR are in the league at the moment that they're missing him massively. So you've got properly clever players that can do things and like I say you add Colwell into that like you're you're a clever little side you know that that can cause people problems and it sort of brings me to your predictions so um as as some of the regular listeners will know we do a predictor league called the Sluga Six and I asked Tom off air to to send me his predictions and uh, he's gone for a 3-1 Cardiff win um which um I'm obviously smirking a little bit about and hoping that he's wrong um but uh, but the reality of it is look, based on based on form he's probably not far off of of what what the, what the bookies and what what other sort of um, media outlets might be predicting so um yeah 3-1 tom so what's your thinking behind behind that particular scoreline to be honest, i think i was still a little bit excited after the norwich win when i said that um, <laughs> it, it's like i know this is gonna kind of be the test to see where we're going to go for the rest of the season now um because i think even though you guys probably haven't had the start um that you were hoping for not really the start i thought you guys might have had as well mm-hmm. to still to be able to go to luton and to say we got a result there that's going to be huge for confidence just to mm-hmm. say you know we went to kenilworth road and we got a win um and i think to be honest, with kind of the performances we've put in the last few weeks the team's we've beaten the teams we haven't lost to, you know, even when we were still bad, we went to Ashton Gate and got a draw in a, in a big game there. We beat Norwich at home. We drew nil nil with West Brom at the Hawthorns. You know, it's like the talent is there. I think the performance is definitely there. It's just, you know, it obviously get a bit more nervous as you come towards game day. Um, It's like, can we kind of, you know, put it all together. Um, and I think we can, I think we will. Um, I think if everyone can sort of play to our uh, best strengths, I think Robertson um, might be back from injury in time um, for this week. And if he is, then that will be a huge bonus as well. Because yeah. um, he's a such a good midfielder as well. He's, we, we developed quite a strong midfield over yeah. the last couple of weeks. Um, so I think if we can 
not change the team too much from what's been the kind of winning formula for us so far. And with a couple of names coming back, like Perry NG and Robertson, I think we'll kind of have enough. It'll be tough. Yeah. Um, it'll be very tough. But, you know, I'm, I'm going with a heart. Uh, yeah. on this one no no I understand it I, I, I think when when I messaged you first over the weekend about setting this up I said about congratulations for the win because it's a great win yeah um, especially to come back from behind that that late on um, was Perry and G absolutely um, injured because of that that horrific um, incident where he got his opponent sent off a couple of weeks ago because <laughs> he is a wide up merchant I remember seeing oh, him is. in lower league I remember. I, I, I can't recall the. Was it? Was it Accrington? He was at, or was it some? It was a lower league crew. Team. I think it was crew. That's it. I knew it was red yeah. and white crew. And I remember him coming to Kenilworth Road and going, "Good player, but what a shit house." <laughs> so, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I, when you just mentioned his name, cause I, I just thought, "Oh no, him again." <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be good. It'll be good value for the guys in the in the uh, in the main stand at Luton on the on Wednesday night. So yeah, that'll be that'll be good fun. But um, anyway, Tom, I'm gonna leave it there because um you you've you've explained beautifully about the the confidence that cardiff have got um about the fact that you've got players coming back that you're like i say you're riding the crest of a wave uh, under a new manager that's got a new way of playing and uh, lots and lots of confidence coursing through the team even if that might not translate to wednesday night um for the, for some of the fans who will be a bit more more sort of uh, worried about going away to kenworth road midweek but the reality of it is that cardiff are on on great form um I hope that um, you enjoy watching the game. I hope that Luton win. I hope that your prediction is wrong. But I'm very grateful for you joining us today, Tom. Uh, and for and like I say, I'll, I'll post this up on um, on our social media. And uh, it, for those hatters that are watching, give Tom a follow um, as we take on Cardiff City on Wednesday night. Thank you very much, Tom. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, everyone, thank you very much for listening, first and foremost. Uh, that was Tom Taylor, uh, the Cardiff City fan. And uh, like I say, he's, uh, he's, he's jubilant at the minute. He's very, very confident that Cardiff are going to come away to Kenilworth Road and get a 3-1 win, which, uh, like I say, on, based on their form, you can understand his reasoning. But I genuinely hope that Luton Town's home form recently overcomes uh, that Cardiff City side. For Luton, it's going to be interesting to see what lineup they go with. We've actually got options, which is absolutely fantastic. I think that it will be interesting to see whether Mengi and Bell are asked to continue uh, to play, despite uh, getting through 90 minutes and suffering major cramp in Mengi's case. Um, but it's so nice to think that we could bring in Holmes. We've got Doughty to come back in. We can utilise Baptiste. We could potentially even see something way out there if we're chasing the game. Do we have a a case where there's Tahith Chong as left wing back and Alfie Doughty as right wing back. Do we really, really go for it? It's going to be really interesting. And I, I can't wait to get back under the lights at Kenilworth Road and, and keep endeavouring for those three points because we're not far off, guys. We're really, really not far off. The table is so congested that a couple of wins before the international break would do absolute wonders. If we can get four to six points out of the next two games, we'll be rocking and rolling and ready for the next part of the season. So, as usual... Come on, you atters. Drop us a follow at OK Football Show. Take care. See you on Wednesday.